Why didn't you go down to the kennels that were so close by? There was no reason to. I mean, You're Matt- making multiple missed calls to Maggie, and she's so close. And there's a driveway right there. Why do you not just go down there and say, hey, guys, I'm heading over there? It, it wasn't important to do that. Me, me making those phone calls is simply me letting, I believe I called Maggie and I believe call, I called Paul. But that, that, that's simply me just letting them know that I'm leaving for a minute. I'll be back. The fact that, that they don't answer is not unusual at all. Now, it is odd. It is unusual that they never call me back. Um, and, but, but at that moment, the fact that there's a missed call, when, when I know they're on the property, I mean, that doesn't even register a, at all. I, I, that, that's perfectly normal to try to call somebody who's on the property and not be able to get them. And, and as far as not going down there, uh, there, there was no sense of urgency. Maggie was with Paul, you know? She should be as safe as she could be. What bothers you about this? Two really big red flags for me. Now, you know, we talk about body language as baseline. What's normal for you is normal for you. What's normal for me is normal for me. There's a spot where he says there was, it was not abnormal for them to not answer. It was abnormal for them not to call. And there's a quick fluctuation right through his brow. Do we know what it means? No, but that's the business we're in, is we're measuring why not this. And the other one is when he is showing, talking about them being missing and the grief and he's crying, there's still no grief muscle in this guy's forehead. He's talking about his kid being missing. When you push on him, when he pushes on him, you see the grief muscle. When he goes back to talking about the child or about them being injured, gone. Should have been as safe as possible. You would think his forehead would not uncurl, but it doesn't. Right. Also, we're seeing a great combination of someone trying to stay calm because the attorney is poking at him, trying to make him angry, which is working, but at the same time, he's cognizant enough to keep his body turned toward the jury as, he's, as he's ta his answer goes toward the jury, and then he, he sort of tracks the other attorney with his eyes going to the other side. But the most fascinating thing is to see these things raise up in him and him trying to control them as he gets really still, and then that first hand comes out. And this is, we know these are illustrators. That's how your brain emphasizes specific words or phrases like I did just then, specific words or phrases. And so we see those go away. And then the other one comes back up and he starts trying there. They start, as he tries to control this, we're seeing those things butt together. And it just, that's the odd uh, behavior. That's what gives you the weird feeling that you get when you watch him. You go, something's not right here. Can I, can I so he's painting by the numbers. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and did you notice how small he was? Did you notice him getting smaller? Shrinking. We call that turtling for a reason. He's turning into a smaller target, trying to dry up and disappear. And this is an unconscious thing when people are under attack. And eventually, at one point on the stand, he exposes the top of his head. That's submission all day, every day. What, you know, what do you, what do you think about that? I thought this is very powerful testimony because you realize that this place where this happened, Roselle, it's isolated. It's this big hunting lodge. And she, Maggie wasn't living there, and Paul wasn't living there. So how could, if it was some random killer, how would they know that on this evening, Maggie would have come an hour and a half from away, Paul would have come from all of the stuff he's doing socially in school, and happened to be there at the time that this killing happened? And remember, Alex said something very interesting. He said when he was there, just before that kennel video was taken, and the dogs were running wild, he goes, there was no one else there. The dogs were not alerting to any other strangers on the property. So how could this person just suddenly show up right when those few moments that Alex leaves and goes to the house and kill both of these people who weren't even supposed to be there on the property? Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.